actually crack the shaft. One trick is to uh, uh, is by starting to cut about halfway through the shaft with either one of these uh, uh, blades, and then um, loosen the uh, jaws of your vise, rotate the shaft about 90 degrees, clamp it again, then cut through it. I find by doing this that you're less likely to splinter it when you get to the very, very end. Um, and that's one of the reasons why, because shafts cost, or, you know, costing upwards of $100 more, you don't want to make a costly mistake just for, you know, two, two seconds worth of work. Now this ends our manual method. As you can see, there's not much investment to uh, cut both steel or cut both steel and composite shafts safely. And when I say composite, this refers to graphite shafts as, as these are made from more than one material. Graphite shafts are made from different fibers and held together with epoxy rust. That's the reason why they're called composites. Next up is a uh, Dremel or a high-speed rotary tool with an abras abrasive cut-up wheel. And for hobbyists, you may already have this tool uh, in your uh, workshop. And it could be used safely to cut virtually any type of steel or graphite uh, shaft. Um, you just want to make sure to use the appropriate cut-off wheel and uh, use the recommended speed for whatever uh, shaft material you're going to be cutting. When using these, you want to use as little force as possible to cut through the shaft, as the grit of the wheel is what's going to supply the, uh, the cutting action. And too much pressure can and will break off the small wheel, so keep plenty of them on hand. Most importantly, when working with this type of tool, or really any motorized shaft cutting device, you want to wear safety glasses to protect your eyes. Personally, I almost like the manual methods discussed earlier over the use of a high-speed rotary tool. The reason being, these are really, uh, the, the small blades are really fragile. And if you get in a rush or apply too much pressure, they easily break off and you have to have, or you have to take the time to replace the wheel. And in that amount of time, you could just have, uh, you could have cut the shaft with a tubing cutter or a hacksaw. But more, more importantly, from a safety standpoint, you want to make sure no one else is in your immediate area when cutting uh, while using this type of tool. Now, one of the best methods of cutting shafts for small and medium-sized shops is the use of an abrasive uh, metal cutting wheel attached to a bench grinder. And it's recommended to use a, like a 3,450 RPM and a minimum third horsepower grinder. And this uh, ensures uh, the quality of the cut with the abrasive cutoff wheel so it produces a smooth and a clean cut. Now when selecting an abrasive wheel, um, you want to choose one that's rated for ferrous metal cutting. Uh, this type of cutoff wheel is designed to, to last longer when cutting any type of shaft material that you're going to encounter. With an uh, abrasive cutoff cut wheel, uh, again, you want to use very little force uh, to cut through the shaft, since the grit of the wheel is uh, supplying all the cutting action. And abrasive uh, wheels uh, can be used to cut all types of shafts, from steel to titanium to fiberglass and composites. A few things you'll want to know when, when using a stock bench grinder is, uh, uh, first and foremost, uh, make sure to keep the cutting guards on at all times. Next, the, the, the abrasive cutoff wheels were, were going to be much, much thinner than the stone grinding wheel it replaces. Therefore, you want to make sure um, you purchase from your local hardware store several washers to use as spacers to help center and securely mount your blade. And you probably want to measure the arbor size or check the details of your grinder before you go and get them. I find it best if you push the shaft about halfway through and then rotate. This way you get a cleaner cut. Now take a look at the bottom picture for a second. This is how not to cut a uh, shaft. As you can see, the shaft is uh, positioned at an angle. 
you want it to be as square as possible. Now, many home shops already have a six-inch uh, bench grinder, and if you don't own one, they're rel relatively inexpensive to obtain. Plus, the abrasive wheel lasts a long, long time. This is perhaps the most efficient method of uh, cutting shafts. Now, Harico offers a shaft cutting machine that does double duty by not only cutting shafts, but also braiding shafts and turning down ferrules. This helps to cut down in your bent space, and is less expensive than if you're buying two different machines. If you're interested, the code is uh, SCMFTM, and we also supply the, uh, uh, the wheels as well. And if you cut lots of composite shafts, occasionally it helps to cut a steel shaft or even a spare bolt to keep the blade clean. And one more thing, shafts that have quite a bit of fiberglass in them usually lower cost composite shafts like our Powerflex FW114 or most of the junior composite shafts, the blade will wear very quickly. So I just wanted to let you know that this is considered normal and uh, that you don't have a de defective blade. Wait for the slides to turn here. Okay. One of the newer options available to club makers is a motorized mini chop saw with an abrasive wheel. And you could find these at places like Harbor Freight or a few club making suppliers and rather inexpensively. Now small to medium sized shops could uh, use this uh, smaller version of a lever arm uh, cutoff saw mounted with an appropriate abrasive cutting wheel. And this is another fast and efficient uh, way to cut all types of shafts when you're cutting one shaft at a time. This would be considered an alternative to the bench grinder, and they're portable if a uh, bench base is at a premium in your shop. Now be aware, um, these will kick out some dust when cutting composite shafts, so you may want to create some sort of dust containment system indoors with your shop back, or at least cut the shafts in a designated area away from anything that you want to keep clean. And it may not hurt to use a dust mask, uh, a dust mask, easy for me to say today, for your uh, health. Um, with any motorized piece of equipment, I would always suggest wearing a shop apron, long pants without cuffs, and shoes with socks and no sandals. And you want to be careful with hot steel shaft pieces flying off and causing a burn. Um, I knew one person who smelled something burning. When he looked down, uh, he s saw his pants smoldering from the the um, shaft that he cut minutes before, and it got caught in the uh, cuff of his pants. So be prepared for uh, things like that. Now, larger club making shops could use a uh, lever arm chop saw or radial arm saw mounted with an appropriate um, abrasive uh, cutting wheel. Uh, these machines probably provide the, the fastest, most efficient way to cut all types of shafts. Um, as much as most of the large manufacturers uh, use this type of uh, system. So if you own one of these uh, saws, it's definitely the uh, procedure to use if you want to increase your proficiency. And again, remember to position the saw in an area of your shop that's going to contain the dust as much as possible. And uh, in, in larger volume shops, you really want to move, move it to an area where the general public doesn't have access to it. One additional plus in favor of these uh, larger 14-inch chop saws or radial arm saws, um, you can purchase uh, or even make your own if you really want it to, uh, a special shaft cutting uh, uh, jig or, or fixture uh, to enable you to cut an entire uh, set of shafts with one pass of the saw. Um, this really does help streamline your, uh, your 